Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We are now joined by Cavaliers' new general manager, Mike Ganzi, a name that I feel like is so synonymous in this town with now Cavs basketball, but before that, high school basketball, his legendary career at Olmstead Falls, going to West Virginia and playing an unbelievable game at Cleveland State that we all remember against Chris Paul and Wake Forest. And he joins us now on Sports Tonight. Mike, first of all, congratulations to you. Uh, an unbelievable job you've done with the Cavaliers organization. Uh, Well-deserved, the new GM. I know Northeast Ohio is proud of you. We're proud of you. And uh, this just has to be so cool for you. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's it's super, super exciting. I mean, being being a Cleveland kid and growing up and watching, you know, the Cavaliers and all the Cleveland teams is, you know, my whole, t my whole time growing up. It's, uh, it's exciting. I just, I'm pitching myself, not, not thinking it's real, but it is. I got to imagine growing up, right. Home stuff falls the Cavs. I mean, they were, they, they were one of your teams, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, my parents, we had season tickets. So I tried to get to as many games as I could when I wasn't playing. And, you know, now, now I'm part of the team, which is pretty, pretty fun. Has it, what's this been like? Has it, has it been a whirlwind? Obviously your, your story is, is pretty well known. You, you, you end up with the, with the Cavs organization as an intern, uh, you work your way up. You were in the, and you were in the, the NBA DL and, and the G league and the GM of the charge. And you just continue to work your way up. But I mean, gosh, Cavs GM, um, is there a part of you that, that has to step back a little bit and kind of say, wow. Yeah, it does. I mean, like I said, I mean, the Cavs have always been a team that I've grown up watching my whole life. And, you know, this is always something I've dreamed of doing. And now I guess, you know, to kind of be here, you know, it's, it's even special. And I'm just, I'm just really, really excited. And, you know, hopefully we can continue to keep building something here, you know, moving forward. And I'm just really, really happy. I mean, I've had a lot of really good people, you know, that I've worked with in my time with the Cavs that have really helped me along the way, you know, my family as well. My wife is unbelievable. She, you know, I would, I wouldn't be able to do the job I do without her, you know? So, um, you know, I'm just very, very lucky and just happy to stay home. It really seems like right now there is, there's so much continuity with this organization that that's so refreshing to, to have. I mean, you've got ownership that, that seems to give you guys everything you need. Then there's Kobe Altman. Then now it's you and, and you guys have coached JB Bickerstaff under contract. Do you feel the same where it's just, it's got to be refreshing to have everybody kind of on the same page in sync. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that, Mike. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, give a credit to, to our chairman, Dan Gilbert, you know, he, he wants to build stability and, you know, obviously I've been with the Cavs now 10 years and we've had a lot of, you know, different GMs head coaches. And I think with the group, we have not only players, but front office and coaches, you know, we want to, we want to keep the same people in house and keep growing them. And, you know, just have something we can build on, you know, for many years to come with our group we have already. I, I want to ask you this the right way, Mike, um, what you can can bring to the organization. Uh, this isn't your job interview. You already landed it. But I'm thinking about player development, right? Drafting guys, developing guys, especially in this this sort of market. That's got to be key, right? And, and that's got to be something that, that you're going to emphasize, correct? Yeah, no, correct. I mean, you know, JB Bickerstaff and, and Kobe and even, you know, our whole ownership, like we want to bring guys that want to be here in Cleveland. You know, we're not, we're not necessarily a hot, you know, free agent destination, but when you get in our building and you see all the resources we have, our practice facility, how we fly, you know, how we, how, how we, you know, with our, with our chefs, with our food, I mean, everything we do is top notch. And that's a credit to, you know, our chairman, Dan Gilbert. And there's so many guys that leave us that are with us maybe a month or a year or 10 years and they leave us like, man, we really had it good there. You know, like you guys treated us like first class, like, you know, like the best. So I think that's what we're trying to build. And I think for me being a Cleveland kid, you know, and growing up here my whole life, being a fan of all our sports towns and, you know, it's a blue collar town. I mean, we live and die with our sports teams, you know? So I think hopefully I can, you know, maybe instill some of that with some of our players and our staff and, you know, we just want guys that want to be here because we got one of the we got the best fan base in, in all the NBA. So, you know, those years when LeBron was here and we we're going to the finals and we we're making runs like, you know, it was it was the best best arena in, in the in the whole NBA. So we're trying to build that. And I just think with me being a Cleveland kid, hopefully I can kind of instill some of, you know, some of the Cleveland roots, I guess, to them. Well, let's talk about your team a little bit. I remember at the beginning of the season, Mike, I had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with J.B. Bickerstaff, and I asked him right out of the gate. I said, Coach, you know, what are the goals this year for this team? And he told me flat out, hey, 
if we could be in a situation by the end of the year where we are playing meaningful games to get into the play-in game or the play-in tournament the NBA has, I, I think that would be great. You know, that would be a success. And now, you know, you look at where you guys are, um, an unbelievable first half, one of the surprises of the NBA season. Is there a part of, of all of this that is almost taking you guys a, a little bit by surprise What where it's, okay, I, we're a little accelerated here, but this is good. <laughs> yeah, no, I think definitely, you know, like this start, obviously, you know, being what, 36 to 26, 10 games over 500 with, you know, just under, you know, just had 20 games to go. I mean, I would have not, we, you know, we didn't expect this necessarily, but, you know, our young guys have taken jumps and, you know, I, I think JB said it before, but I, a, a thing that goes underrated is we had like our whole roster here, like after Labor Day. And that, you know, building that continuity, that chemistry with each other, I think that was huge to our, you know, having us getting off to a good start. And, you know, unfortunately, we've hit a little bit of an injury bug here. And I think some of our youth has shown a little bit, but, you know, we have 20 games to right the ship. And, you know, we're, we're going to play 20 meaningful games, you know, however, wherever we end up here in the next 20 games. So it's exciting. And, you know, we have such a young team with some good vets, but, you know, I mean, we're all excited with what's not only come this year, but also in the future. I was going to say, in a perfect world, obviously, Mike, you wouldn't want to have to face any adversity. <laughs> but <laughs> you guys are with the injuries and, and, and a few of the losses recently. But, um, I mean, it could really tell you a lot about this team, right, how they come out of this, especially these young guys. I mean, again, you don't want to wish for the adversity, but you yeah. could certainly make a positive out of some of this, right? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think just all year we've – you know, between COVID and injuries, we've, we've kind of been snake bitten there and somehow JB and the staff have done an incredible job, just kind of, you know, putting together different lineups that we've never played with and somehow at least not, not only winning games, but competing and staying in games. So that's a credit to him and the staff. And, you know, we just hopefully we can get some of our guards back and kind of finish strong here. But, you know, I think every time we, we go into a game, we have a chance just because of our makeup and the team we are and our coaching staff. So, you know, we're going to see what we have these last 20 games. Well, the last thing for you, I guess we'll, we'll kind of reassess the goal now as, as we look at the NBA standings and, and you admit it, hey, you know, maybe we're a little bit ahead of schedule, but where you guys are at right now, I guess there is a part of you that, that could fall into that plane if you, you continue to lose. But I, I got to believe, Mike, the goal now is even almost avoid that play and, and make sure you're getting yourself a, a series, right? Right in the, in the NBA playoffs. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, like talking to our coaches, our staff, I mean, we'd be crazy if we didn't think, you know, getting in the top six and avoiding the play and wasn't our goal. So, you know, that, that continues to be our goal. And, you know, we got a tough stretch coming up here with a lot of teams and, you know, the East up top, man, it's, you lose a couple games and you're out of it. You win a couple, you're right at the top. So it's so jam packed that hopefully we can continue to stay among that group and, you know, and, and, and give our fans a playoff series, you know, and give our young guys, especially a playoff series to experience. And, you know, we've have, we have Kevin, we have Rondo, but beyond that, you know, we don't have a lot of guys that have necessarily been to a playoff series and, and playoffs. So, so we're excited to hopefully experience that and, and sneak into that top six. Well, Mike, I know Northeast Ohio is pulling for you. Cleveland's pulling for you. What a story you go from Olmstead falls uh, to, to that great career you had at West Virginia. We all remember that, that team and, and that game that you had at, against Chris Paul at Wake Forest and, and to now be with the Cavaliers for so long and, and be the general manager. It's, it's a storybook. It's, it's, it's really cool, Mike. No, I'm, I'm very lucky, very blessed. I got you know, a great family that supports me and I got great, great people at the Cleveland Cavaliers that support me too. So I'm, I'm living the life and hopefully we can continue to keep uh, building this thing up and you know, be, be, be special in the NBA. Mike, really appreciate the time. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. Perfect. Mike Gansey.